Hello, I'm Jamie and this is Mike. And today it's one of your favourites, it's one of our favourites. We buy a load of pretentious stuff and we get our mates to review it. Jamie, we have the first one almost under the cloche. He likes it already because it's in a kilner jar. A butter making kit. So the kilner jar just holds everything I need to make butter. Herbs. Some salt. And that's my recipe and instructions. It's a make your own herb butter kit. Make some butter. I'll need a bowl, a mixer, a fine strainer, a measuring cup, and some refrigerator cooled water. Yeah, this jar has contained three of the 18 things that I need to make butter. Pour the cream, milk, buttermilk into a bowl and cover it with a lid. Leave this mixture for 60 minutes outside the refrigerator to acidify. Uh, I'm using one of the three things. Oh! After an hour, beat the mixture with a powerful mixer at maximum speed. After approximately 30 minutes, the mixture will separate into what you might call butter in a milky liquid. What we have is... Oh. Cottage cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's essentially what it looks like. We looked at some of the reviews of the kit as well, and there were several people saying the recipe failed on them too. Wow, mm. you set me up to fail. <laughs> so Ebers is going to give you his amazing butter recipe, which we're assured does work. Just whip up double cream. Basically, you want to separate the fats from the cream. I've definitely overwhipped that. What have you got? Oh dear. Yeah, that's butter. That's completely separated, and that looks like butter, unflavoured butter, I guess, and milk water. Okay, let's go for a little bit of salt, nondescript herbs. It's good butter. I mean, I made that in five minutes. How much would you pay for your do-it-yourself herb butter making kit? Can't be. It really can't be any more than eight pounds. Is it more than ten pounds? It is twice that at 19.99, although we did get it for 16 quid. Why? They want to sell that for 20 pounds. And we then had to go and buy all the other stuff to actually make butter, which didn't work. There's nothing there. Pretentious or not? It's not pretentious. It's just a bit pointless. No. <laughs> okay. It's not pretentious. It. Have a go at number two. Pow. Ah. Oh. Bang. Is it apple sauce? It is not apple sauce. It looks sweet. It almost smells like alcohol. It tastes a bit like cider. It's, <laughs> it's a bittery honey. Bitter honey. This is spreadable beer. Finally, you can eat the stuff. Move over Branston pickle and mango chutney. Each life-changing jar of deliciousness contains 40% beer. It's smooth, gooey with an intense hoppy scent. That is beer. That is a light blonde beer. Why don't we treat you to beer on toast? <laughs> okay. Oh, Yay! except what has happened is I've just burnt the toast. So that's a chef that can't make a cup of tea and Dude. can't make toast. Is it? What is that? I can't be here and there. Anyway, right, you got me Third some real toast. Cheers. That works, by the way. Thank you. I love this. It, oh, it's, it's just the gooeyness of it and the spreadability of it is really satisfying to eat. They say spread it liberally on toast or just chug down the whole jar. I'm not sure about that, but how much would you pay for a jar? Let's go for like, I go fiver. I'll do a fiver on this. Six pounds. Just shy of a tenner at 9.99. Yeah, if I was ever offering tea and toast to people, I'd go jam, marmite, beer. Don't know if I'd pay £10 for it though. Spreadable beer, pretentious or not? Yep, pretentious. I mean, yeah, it's pretentious, but I like it. Do it. Bidoo, ooh. You got me rose petals. Straight away, that looks like coffee, but it's been used. Ooh. Really fruity in smell. Cranberries. Not cranberries. Cranberries. No. Nope. Definitely cranberries. Are you getting any kind of... Cranberry, yeah. These are dried coffee cherries used to infuse into boiling water much like tea. They provide the fruity notes of coffee with the caffeine. So normally that coffee pulp that you now have in your fingers or the dried cherry would normally be wasted. Doesn't taste anything like coffee. Oh yes. It doesn't taste like coffee at all. It is slightly fruity, 
but more than that, it's watery. And when you eat it, there's a, there's a bitterness that comes through, whereas within the tea, I don't get any bitterness at all. I just get the fruitiness. How much do you think that sells for? 15 pounds. Five, a fiver again, I'll go fiver. Would you buy it for seven pounds, 80 pence for the entire bag? half, near enough, what I said it would be, seven pounds, 80. It's, I like it, it is expensive. I'd recommend you try it. If I got a caffeine hit from that, and I could serve it to my friends when they came round, and I'm like, I'm not gonna get you a cup of coffee, I'm gonna get you some coffee cranberry things <laughs> instead. You still haven't got through to him. It becomes like a point of interest, and I think that could be quite good. He's literally made his decision as to what he thinks it is, and it is that now. Yeah. The reasons that you just cited for it being appealing to you mm. sound pretentious to me. Mm. So is it pretentious? It is pretentious, but I'll have to tell you in a little bit whether I think it works. I don't know why, but that's not pretentious. Well, mm, cucumber. That looks like I've just been to McDonald's and I've deconstructed the burger the way I always do. Get rid of the rubbish. I'd say that the gherkins are an integral part of a double cheza. Do you prefer cucumbers? I love cucumbers. Oh, well, you're, you'll be just fine. Whoa, that is strong pickle. There's another flavour there other than just pickled cucumber. What is it? That is proper vinegar. I am a big fan of that. You have some Newton and Pot gin pickled cucumbers. Gin! Oh, amazing. Does the gin make any difference? I mean, you said it tasted great, so maybe it does. I'm trying to think if I'm tasting gin. I can taste the juniper berries and the, the, the flavours around the gin that make that remind me of a gin and tonic more than the gin itself. I mean, it looks like the kind of thing you're going to pick up in a farm shop or at a farmer's market. Um, artisanal is the right word for that. What the hell are you doing? Making himself a knickerbock of glory, obviously. That is probably one of the best pickled cucumbers I can remember having, apart from the ones that I made. He sounds like James. Oh, yes! Might work quite nicely with a cheese toasty. Yeah. You know what? This is going to cut through the richness of the cheese and the butter in such a great way. <laughs> is that a good sandwich? That is an unbelievably good sandwich. I don't necessarily think I can taste gin, but what I can tell you is it's spicy. The crunch from the cucumbers is exactly what I want in a pickle. Yeah. Are you, would you like to hazard a guess at how much that jar is? No, because you're only going to disappoint me. Six or seven pounds. I would say that that is probably going to be five pounds. It's five pound 99 for the jar. So yeah, four and a bit times more expensive than regular ones, but you've just said that's one of your best cucumbers you've ever tasted. I think it's better on its own if you want to experience the gin flavours. If I wanted to have extra special pickles, I would make some because they're actually really easy to make. Pretentious, delicious, probably not going to buy it. That is definitely pretentious. Pretentious, but I like it. <laughs> oh, unidentifiable black syrupy looking thing. A soy sauce or hoisin. It's thick and it's dark. It makes me think it might be a, something like a balsamic vinegar. That is balsamic vinegar. It's fruity-ish. Cranberries? Yeah, it's like a balsamic cranberry vinegar. Is it bog standard balsamic vinegar? It's brown. It's delicious. It tastes brown. Leonardi Condimento Originale Il Patriarca. Il Patriarca means the head. And this balsamic vinegar has rightly acquired the name because of its 30 year maturity. Due to its predominant storage in ash and cherry wood barrels, the balsamic got particularly sweet notes. The bottles are also oh individually numbered, have a goodness. seal with age and barrel, and come with a certification. There you go, I should put that on the wall. Oh, I've got vinegar on it. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't printed, that actually is handwritten. Did you like it? I did like it. A little bit of smoked burrata, a little bit of mozzarella, some tomatoes, if you'd like to have a... Now oh, I'm happy. Apply that balsamic vinegar to one half. We're going to give you a standard balsamic vinegar to oh, I apply to the other back. half. Well, we'd like you to compare the two. This is really liquidy. 
whereas the aged one is far more syrupy. It's much thicker. The aged one has so much more going on. Why don't you think about how much that bottle might be? Don't want to think about how much the bottle is because it's only going to make me angry and I'm having a lovely time. There's nothing that jumps out about this that goes, this is more valuable apart from the packaging. I'm tempted to say that this aged balsamic vinegar Complete with certificate. Complete with certificate of authentication is as expensive as the number of years it's been aged for. I think that's probably £30. We found a nice branded aged balsamic in the supermarket. So that one's not aged, the comparison you had there, but we, we looked at an aged one and that came in at £4.10 per 100 millilitres. Mm. And that one you have there is 23 times more expensive. That bottle is £62.50. £960 a litre, nearly £1,000 a litre. <laughs> it is a delicious balsamic. There's no denying that. But if I had them side by side, one identical to this, then I'd really try to tell the difference. That's because they'd be identical. Of course it's pretentious. Really? Yeah. But it's also bloody delicious. It's good that they're out there so the standards are set. But my God, is it pretentious. Give the video a like and comment down below. Let us know what did you think of the ingredients? The spreadable beer, the coffee tea. Would you eat it, drink it, buy it? More great news. A couple of weeks ago, we let you know that our amazing book, Bucket List, had gone on general sale. Well, they all sold out and lots of you got upset. So we found some more. They were just lying around. <laughs> Underneath the sofa. And they are on sale now. There's not many of them, so you need to snap them up quick. If you don't already know, the Bucket List book is full of stories of some of the most incredible dishes that mean the most to people from around the world. Us, top chefs, community members, everyone. And not only the stories behind them, but also the actual recipes so you can recreate them at home and find out why they're so special for yourself. I made a wedding cake. I mean, that's, that's a story in itself. That is a story in itself. I made brisket, but no surprises there. We've said enough, so we're going to leave it there. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you on Sunday at 4 p.m. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment. Make sure you enjoy your week. Bye. As we mentioned, Sorted is just run by a group of friends. So if you like what we're doing, then there are loads of ways you can support us and get more involved. Everything you need to know is linked below. Thanks and hope to see you in a few days. Knives, knives to grind. Any knives to cry? Bright strawberries, bright blueberry, this wonderful feeling.